What we're going to be doing is working with eye movement skills and eye movement control. And the reason why Claire is on the floor is that we want to isolate eye movements separate from the body movement and wiggling. And so Claire is doing really well. I start with lots of kids that are wigglers. Um, the idea of offering this kind of care is similar to a horse trainer with a bucking bronco, wild stallion, or a wild colt. What do the horse trainers do? They bridle the horses. And so we're not going to likely with Claire, but we do with other kids. We'll put sport weights on the ankles, we'll put sport weights on the thighs, we'll put sport weights on the wrists, we'll put even a real heavy weight on the forehead. We're not going to do that at the moment with Claire, but the idea is to isolate the eye movements control separate from the body. And that's why Claire is on the floor. So that we can work with eye movement skills again, separate from the body. And what we're going to actually do is take your glasses off. And we have, for Claire, her own patch because what we're going to do is go in the same order, same sequence. A lot of kids have difficulty with sequencing, knowing what's first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And some kids, parents find out that they tell their son, their daughter to do one thing at a time, rather than say, I want you to do these three things in a row, and then you come back and I'll tell you what to do next. And so Claire has her own patch. This is a brand new patch in a Ziploc bag. And um, nobody else is going to wear Claire's patch. And Claire is not going to wear anybody else's patch. But what we're going to do is have Claire put this patch on her left eye first. So let's pick up your head. There we go. I'm like a pirate. Yeah, we're going to be a pirate. <laughs> and what we're going to do is follow the leader. And I'm going to have the wolf wands that we talked about earlier in another video. Let's bring your body over a little bit like that. So these are the wolf wands that Bruce Wolf designed with the beads on a stick. Wolf beads, wolf wands. And so what I'd like you to do, Claire, is without moving your head, Move your eyes to follow the leader. We're going to stretch all the way to your left. We're going to stretch all the way to the right. Because with these eye movement skills, as we mentioned in the other video, is that when we work with eye movement skills, the muscles behind the neck are moving at the same time. Right around the neck muscles, right around the center for bladder control. And for individuals who have bedtime accidents, this is a big way to stop those bedtime accidents. So what we're doing is without her glasses, having Claire follow the leader. And you can tell that it's difficult for her to move her eyes because it's the first time you've ever done this on the floor, isn't it? And again, the reason why Claire's on the floor is to isolate the, the eyes moving separate from the body. And I can't crawl inside Claire's head, but if my target is here and her eyeball is pointing over here, I know she's not looking at my target. And we're also looking at pupil size. People know that when you shine light into the eye, the pupil gets smaller. Take the light away, the pupil gets bigger. But there's also a pupil reaction to getting things clear and in focus. As I move the target away, the pupil gets bigger. And as I bring this towards your nose, and if I might go all the way to the nose and say bingo, because that's a fun word, as her eye pupil gets smaller, then I know that it's clear, but is that blurry now? You see yourself in there, Claire? There's a little tiny mirror. So what we're talking about is watching the pupil size. 
so that kids will wonder, how does Dr. Groman know that the target's blurry? Well, it's because I'm looking at the pupil reaction. The pupil is big now, and then as I bring it closer to her, if she keeps it clear, and this is related to focusing and, and attending on the target. And so, there, you're clearing it up, Claire. Did you clear it up? I could tell. Do you know how I could tell? I was looking at your pupil, and when your pupil gets tiny and small like that, I know that you're clearing it up. And I also know that you are crossing your legs. I don't want to tell you how I know, how I know that she's crossing her legs. I don't want to tell her, maybe she'll figure it out after a little bit, but I don't want to tell her how I know what, and your feet are out like a duck quack quack, bring your toes straight up in the air, there you go. So the idea is, again, to pretend that Claire is a statue, a statue that can do some special things, can blink every once in a while, can breathe, can pump blood through the body. And so what we're working with here now are her pursuits, following or tracking. <clears throat> and I'm looking at her pupil size. Now let's work with saccades. Look at the gold, silver, gold, silver, gold, silver, gold, silver, gold, silver, gold, silver that's it. there you go you're clearing it up thank you claire gold silver gold silver okay so this was with her right eye we're going to do the same thing with the left eye are you getting a headache at all claire good thank you is this the hardest thing you've ever done in your life all right, this is the hardest thing that Claire's ever done in her life. So this is, a, this is a, here we go. Look at the silver again. So now with the left eye. Follow the leader. We're going to stretch all the way. Stretch your eye all the way to your left. Do you still see it? Stretch all the way to your right. Thank you, Claire. We're going to stretch all the way and up and around. Stretch the eye up and around. We're going to move it farther away and closer, sort of like getting closer and farther away, like a slide trombone. And again, um, you likely can see in the video and see Claire's pupil getting smaller when I know that she's working really hard to clear it up. Oh, that's blurry now, isn't it? Can you do it? Does it feel like your eyeball's going to pop out of your head? Because an athlete will hear from his or her coach, if you don't feel the pain, you're not going to make the gain. No pain, no gain. And so there are this is going to hurt. This might feel like at some point that the eyeball or eyeballs both are going to be popping out of the head. I have my camera phone nearby that if one or both eyeballs do pop out of your head, we'll take a picture and put it in a journal article to make you famous. How'd that be? Do you know I'm joking? Yep, I'm joking. Here we go. So this is pursuit. And then jump by movement, saccade, look at the gold, silver, gold, silver, gold, silver, gold, silver, gold, silver, gold, silver. And you can tell that Claire's having some difficulty jumping from one target to the other on my command, gold, which is not unusual the first time, silver. Gold, silver. Claire, you're doing this really well. Do you feel your eye hurting at all here? Not yet? Okay. Some kids will feel that. Some adults will feel that. Here we go. 
Are you doing okay? All right, now, next part is to take the patch off. So now we're gonna work with convergence. And this is where Claire's right eye overshoots, turns in, oh, thank you. Thank you very much, here we go, Claire. So now we're gonna work with not only convergence, but also with the pursuits and saccades at the same time. So here we go. How many of the beads do you see now, Claire? How many, when you look at the bead here, how many Dr. Gromans do you see at the same time? Look at the bead, count to me when you look at the bead. Tell me what you see and not what you think you're supposed to see. Follow it. And if you don't know yet, that's okay. You see one of me when you're looking at the bead here? So if she sees one of me, then she's suppressing that right eye that's turning in, overshooting, um, convergence excess, um, esophoria, esotropia. How many do you see now? You don't see anything at all? Okay. So we're gonna stretch all the way to her right. How many beads do you see now? How many sticks do you see when you look at the bead? Look at the bead. Okay, now when you look at the bead, Claire, you look at the bead, look at the bead. If I hold my hand up in your side vision, do you see my fingers wiggling? Okay, so you have some visual space all the way around what you're looking at directly. And so, if you look at the bead, how many fingers did I just hold up? All right, watch again. Here we go. How many now? Okay. How many now? There you go. Good job. So here we go. Follow the leader. And do you see me when you're looking at the bead? How many noses does it look like? No, look at the bead. How many noses does it look like I have? Still one? All right, so you're still suppressing that right eye. And again, the reason why Claire's on the floor is so that we can work with eye movement scale separate from the body. And we're gonna look at the silver and the gold. Silver, gold, silver, gold, Silver. You saw two of what? The gold. Good. Thank you for telling me because... I saw two of these. Good. That's what you're supposed to see. When you look here... I saw two of those and two of those. Okay. Can you make it one bead and two sticks? Try. Keep trying. You see one bead and two sticks or do you see two beads and two sticks? Uh, one bead and one stick. Okay. And sometimes if you might see something else, like one bead and two sticks, or one bead. Yeah, I like two sticks. Good, that, that's turning, it's turning on your right eye and breaking down the suppression of your right eye. Here we go, keep following it. All right, so this is the silver, look at the gold. Silver, gold, silver, gold, silver, gold. Silver, gold, silver, gold, silver, gold. Silver, good, good. And so what we're doing here in vision therapy is not only it's work. Going like good job. An X. It looked like an X. Okay, gold, silver. All right, now. Two beads and two sticks. Okay, thank you, thank you. We're going to work on that. We're gonna to continue to work on that, what we call vision training, vision therapy.